So now I'm going to introduce the concept of early start and early finish. Um, first of all, what we need to do is we need to take our table of dependencies and draw our PDM network diagram. So the first step, as you know now, is to just draw a rough draft over here, and then we'll do the, the final copy with uh, squares on the nodes for more information. So first of all, we're going to look here. Our first activity is A because it has no predecessor. So first of all, we have activity A, then B and C both depend on A. So we're going to have B is depending on A and C is depending on A. Now, D can start once B is done. So we get activity D and E can start once C is done. So we have activity E coming off of there. And lastly, we have activity F can, fin uh, can start once D and E are both done. So these are both going to lead into activity F. All right, so now what we do, as you recall, we will uh, we will draw, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the nodes here with these squares uh, because we'll be storing more information in them. Uh, and from the previous videos, you know that the way I do this is I will have the activity name here and the duration down there. So all we need to do is just draw in, uh, do this exact same network diagram or flowchart, uh, but just with these as the nodes. All right, so now the point is to introduce the concept of early start and early finish. We denote early start with capital E-S and early finish with capital E-F. Um, I'll be writing them in the top left and top right corners for each activity. And it's actually not that hard of a concept. Early start is just the earliest any activity can start, um, providing uh, there's been no changes to the schedule or anything like that or any delays in any of the preceding activities. And early finish is just the earliest any given activity can finish based on our scheduling here. Again, assuming that nothing has changed. So with that said, we A is at the beginning of a project. It has no predecessor, so we'll begin that at zero. Right, this is the beginning of day one. Um, whereas if at one, one the, the number one would denote the end of day one. So activity A is five days long. Uh, so if you just have zero plus five, activity A will end at the end of day five. If there's been no delays or anything during activity A, and that's the assumption we're making for this type of problem. Now what we do is to find the early start of uh, the succeeding activities, we take the, the early finish of the preceding activity and just write it uh, as the early start of the succeeding activity. So we would just bring the 5 into both of these places. And then all you do is you just continue on. So you just add the duration again. So we have 5 plus 4 is equal to 9. And then we have 5 plus 5 is equal to 10 for activity C. Now let's pause for a second and think about this, if this makes sense. Activity B is four days long, activity A is five days long, and activity B can't start until activity A is done. So if you just add that up, you would have just five plus four. So uh, we get nine, and activity B here, there we said, what we're saying is this the earliest activity B can finish is at the end of day nine. It makes perfect sense, uh, you know, with the simple only considering two activities. Uh, same thing here, we have activity A is five days long, and activity C is five days long, and it can't start until these five days have already been done. So that's why activity C, it's the earliest that it can end, earliest that it can finish, I suppose, is day 10, the end of day 10. All right, so we'll just continue this on. So we'll start with activity B. We'll bring the early finish into the early start of this guy. So we'll bring the nine right over. Nine plus six, 15. Okay, we'll go down here, we'll bring the 10 across. Right, so 10 plus three, is 13. Okay, so now what we're doing, when we had multiple arrows coming out of an activity, that's fine. We just bring that five or whatever it would be up into the early start of all of the succeeding activities. But when you have multiple activities all converging onto one activity, you have to take the largest value. Now, the reason why this is, is because imagine you have uh, this project, right? And there's two kind of, uh, there's two kind of paths that this project takes. So we have A, B, D, and then we have A, C, E. And activity F can't start until D and E are both done, right? It says that right here in the table of dependency. So with that said, if we just started F uh, on the, you know, after at 13, well, that would violate the fact that it has to start after D is done. So because it has to start once both of them are done, you have to take the larger value. Otherwise, you'd be violating one of the, one of the predecessor relationships. So we bring the 15 into here into the early start of F. Uh, so that again, the largest early finish 
becomes the, the early start of the, the succeeding activity. And then we just have 15 plus 4. Uh, and then we have the earliest finish of f is 19. And actually, because f is the, the final activity in this whole project, what we can say is that this project has a duration of 19 days. So that's what we call, when we, when we put in the early start and the early finish of all of these activities, that's what we call the forward pass uh, to get the early start and early finish. Uh, in the next video, we'll do the backwards pass uh, where we'll fill in these two boxes and that's for the late start and the late finish.